Hello, in this video we're going to do a proof. So we're going to let R be an equivalence relation on a non-empty set A and little a and little b elements of A. And we have to prove that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B if and only if A is related to B. So I'm just going to briefly refresh your memory on what the equivalence class actually is. So recall that the equivalence class of say A is the set of all X in A such that X is related to little a. So it's all of the elements that are actually related to little a. That's what the equivalence class of a actually is. And here we're gonna show that these two equivalence classes are the same as long as a is related to b. Now this is an if and only if statement. So we have two parts to show. We have to assume that this is true, then show this is true, and conversely assume this is true, then show this is true. So go ahead, let's go ahead and do the proof. proof. So let's prove this direction first. So we'll start by assuming that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. So suppose that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. And now we have to show that A is related to B. So note, note the following. Note that A is related to A because R is reflexive. And that's because it's an equivalence relation. So that means that little a is in the equivalence class of a, which is equal to the equivalence class of b. So that means that little a is in the equivalence class of b. So that means that a is related to b. Done. Again, we started by assuming that the equivalence class of a was equal to the equivalence class of b. And then note that we're trying to show basically that A is in this set, because this set here, this is the set of all X in A, such that X is related to B. So if we can show that A is in here, then A is related to B and we're done with this direction of the proof, right? So if A is in here, we're good. So in order to show it's in here though, we have to show it's in here. So A is related to A because R is an equivalence relation and symmetry is one of those properties, right? Where A is related to A for all A and big A. So therefore, little a is in here, but this is equal to this, so therefore little a is in here, therefore little a is related to b, boom. The other direction is a little bit harder, I'm thinking. So we'll start by assuming a is related to b. So suppose that a is related to b. And the claim is that these two sets are equal. So we're gonna basically show they're each subsets of each other. So first, I'm gonna show this direction here. So I'll put this little symbol here and we'll say take any x in the equivalence class of A. And the goal now is to show that this x is in the equivalence class of B. So let's think about that. Well, if it's in this equivalence class, that means that x is related to A. Oh, that's interesting. We have x related to A and A related to B. So now, since x is related to a and a is related to b, we have that x is related to b by transitivity. You might say, what's transitivity? It's an equivalence relation, so transitivity is one of the properties. So transitivity basically says whenever you have something like this, x related to a and a related to b, then it's transitive, so x is related to b. So we took an x in a, in the equivalence class of a, and we showed that x is related to b. What does that mean? That means that x is in the equivalence class of b. So we took an element in the equivalence class of a, and we showed that it belongs to the equivalence class of b, and it's true for all x, so we have that the equivalence class of a is a subset of the equivalence class of b. All right, let's show the other direction now. The claim now is that every element in the equivalence class of B is also in the equivalence class of A. So take any X in the equivalence class of B. So what this means, that X is related to B. 
Okay, let's think about what we have. And let's think about where we're going. We have that A is related to B and we have that X is related to B. We're trying to show that X is related to A, right? That's our goal. So maybe we can uh, mix this up a little bit. Uh, we can use symmetry here. So since R is symmetric, you might say, what's symmetry? It basically means when X is related to B, B is related to X. And again, that's another property of an equivalence relation. An equivalence relation is, remember, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So since R is symmetric, we have B related to X. So now we're trying to show that, um, actually, let's not do it that way. Let's not do it that way. Let's, let's do this. Let's use symmetry on this one. Since R is symmetric, you'll see why once I do it, and A is related to B, we have B related to A. So now we can use these two to show X is related to A. So you see, I used symmetry on the wrong one, but I caught my mistake because I realized that if I have this and I have this, I can show A is related to X, which then again, I guess I could have used symmetry after that. But in any case, this is easier since R is symmetric, when A is related to B, we have B related to A. And then now since, um, since X is related to B and B is related to A, we have X related to A. And this is by transitivity. So we started with uh, X in this equivalence class. We showed this. So that means that X is in this equivalence class here. So every X in this equivalence class is also in this equivalence class. Thus, the equivalence class of B is contained in the equivalence class of A. And since we showed both inclusions, therefore the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. Now let's, let's investigate um, how, I, how I switch this up here. So let's suppose, let's go down that, that path. Let's say that I decided to take this approach, which I think was not a good approach, but let's just see what happens. If I end up going with B related to X, let's say I do that. So I've got B related to X, okay? And I've got A related to B. Then what I can do here now is I can use, I can use A related to B and B related to X. I can use both of these. I'll do it up here. A, R, B and B, R, X. I can use transitivity here and I can get A related to X. Then by symmetry, I can say X related to A Therefore, X in the, is in the equivalent of class of A. So that would have worked as well. Okay, that would have worked as well. So this approach, so my little B related to X, and I changed my mind in mid-proof. If I would have done this, okay, I could have used transitivity, gotten this, then use symmetry, and then I'm good. So both, both approaches would have worked. I just, I, I didn't see it right away, so I thought, no, let me, let me try that one. But yeah, that would have worked as well. So multiple ways to do the proof. Um, this problem is about equivalence relations, so it does require a lot of knowledge that I didn't explain at the beginning of the video. Um, but once you know what an equivalence relation is and you know about symmetry, reflexivity, and transitivity, um, you can go through a proof like this. So it's not super hard, but you, you do have to think, right? You do have to think. I hope this video has been helpful to someone in the world who happens to be working on equivalence relations. Good luck.